Okay, so we're going to look at angle relationships and polygons again today. First, let's just start out with this. <clears throat> so we talked about this briefly last day. Um, we have three different distinct patterns with parallel lines. So what I'm going to do is we're actually going to, I'll deal with the second example first. So this is a supplementary angle. So we know that that means that Z plus 3Z minus 9 equals 180. So then we can collect like terms and get 4z minus 9 equals 180. 4z equals 189. And then all we have to do is divide 189 by 4. And we know that z is equal to 47. 0.25. Now, looking at this first example, there are a couple of things that we need to remember. There's a few patterns that we need to remember. First, we need to remember what's called the C pattern. So the C pattern would be the angle 110, and let's call this angle A. So we'll call it angle A, and for argument's sake, angle B. We'll say B is 110. So the C pattern tells us tells us that A plus B equals 180. Okay, it adds to 180. <clears throat> the second pattern we're going to look at is the F pattern. So the F pattern goes like this. And like this, if we had X, we could call this um, down here. C, okay, so we would then be able to say the F pattern the angles are equal so angle C equals X and then finally we can look at the Z pattern which would this, and we'll call this D, and in the Z pattern, <clears throat> angles are equal. Okay, and this should all be review, but we're just going to go over it really quick there. But these patterns can all kind of be written in different ways as well. So if I were to erase what we have there, I could write the Z pattern like this. And my angle would be here and here. I could write it like this. And my angle would be here and here. So by that, we could say that X equals 110 because of the Z pattern. It's just a backward Z. Okay, so we know that X is 110 because it's a Z pattern. Okay. Now there's one more thing we have to look at. X and Y are equal to each other here. And they're called opposite angles. Okay. Opposite angles are equal. Okay, and this isn't the Z pattern, I just didn't change colors. So if we have two angles like this angle and this angle are equal to each other, this angle and this angle are equal to one another. So opposite angles are equal, so therefore y is also equal to 110 because it's an opposite angle. Or we could say that there's, let's do this, it's an upside down x. It has the f pattern as well. All right. <clears throat> Next. So angle relationships in polygons. First, just a couple of terminologies. A concave polygon looks something like this. Okay, and it doesn't have to have this many sides. Okay, I'm just kind of drawing it. There you go. It's got this kind of Pac-Man mouth in it. It's a concavity, okay? So it's got a cavity in it right there on this side. So that's the cavity, so that makes it concave. 
convex polygon. A convex polygon is a little bit different. So a convex polygon is just kind of like a regular old polygon. And I'm trying to draw it. It's a little bit more difficult because when we're drawing like a regular polygon, which I'm pretty bad at, but a regular polygon looks more like that, I guess. <clears throat> they look similar. A convex polygon just has all of our sides out. A regular polygon, all angles are equal. Okay. So we talked about this last day. So sum of interior angles of quadrilateral add to 360. Sum of exterior angles add to 360 because it adds to 360 for all um, shapes. And then this is just kind of something that you should know. Angles of a parallelogram, this angle is equal to this angle. And this angle equals that angle. That's what makes it a parallelogram. So we can actually check that by finding our slopes and things like that. All right, let's look at this example. So Omar calculates that X represents the angle or an angle of 50 degrees. Is he correct? How do you know? Well, this is exterior angle. So we could say that 360 equals 125 plus 95 plus 90, the 90 degree angle plus x. Now all we would have to do is do 360 minus 125 minus 95 minus 90 and we're going to find that x is actually equal to 50. And therefore we know that Omar is correct. Okay so if we're looking at polygons so I'm just going to kind of go down the list here. We've got a triangle. We'll do three or four of them. Quadrilateral, quadrilateral, <coughs> a pentagon, a hexagon. Okay, and the list kind of goes on forever. Number sides are three, four, five, six, and they're going to go on forever. Um, some of your interior angles is always going up by 180, so 180, 360, 540, 720, 900, and so on. Some of exterior angles, however, is always the same. We talked about this. It's going to be 360 all the way down. So if we have a question like this, the sum of interior angles of a 12-sided polygon. So remember, we talked about, we can say the sum of interior angles, so sum of interior it's equal to n minus 2 times 180 where n is the number of sides so here we're going to have 12 minus 2 times 180 we're going to have 10 times 180 and that's going to be equal to 1800 degrees now with the regular polygon that was A. If it was a regular polygon, that means that all the angles are equal. So the angle is equal to 1800 divided by 12, because we have 12 angles. Now, 1800 divided by 12 is going to give us 150. So that means that each angle is 150 degrees. Okay. If we had the sum of interior angles of a 2700 degree shape, well, we're going to use that same formula, but we're just going to do it backwards. N minus 2 times 180. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide the 180 away. So 2700 divided by 180. We get 15. Now, a lot of people would get this wrong because it would stop there. We need to add 2 to that to find N. N is equal to 17. Therefore, it has 17 sides. And we're done. Here's a few questions to just refresh yourself on this.